Last time on the Strings of Fate podcast. I know of your exploits, though, Vincent Obra of the Strings of Fate. And I know that you are not just an adventurer. And so I have a condition for you. I will treat your partner in here. And it will be done by the exchange of currency and to the best of my ability. But I need your help. I need an escort. Somebody to protect me. Beneath the city, out of a dangerous place, there is a matter that I need to take care of. What I believe to be a a reclaiming of something that belongs to the temple. We are going to confront a contact of an underground organization. We're looking for information. There are fragments of the fractured mother that are being stolen. It's healing properties unlike anything known to any nation. I need to figure out who's doing this. They don't understand the devastating effects that holding on to a fragment of the fractured mother can have. We're going to meet with a contact of mine, somebody that can possibly give us a lead. How familiar are you with snag racing? Dresden turns to your group. Folks, if you'd like to make your way down, I know that it's not so easy to make your way to the Witchwood Market. Following a tense encounter in Elizabeth's office, Vincent. You and Deville are led through the halls of the Temple of the Fractured Mother and out into the streets. After everything that's been said, Elizabeth is not one for words, sharing virtually no details of the plan and making even less polite conversation. And you said we're, like, just around the city? Like, are we still in the same area that we were? You probably walked for... Not long, like 30 minutes or so to a different part of the city, a place where the new district where the temples are intersect with one of the housing districts, almost. Did we leave our snail? Snail is left in the in the garage, yes. I'm you assuming did Elizabeth did not ta- want to take it. It was probably like offering, like, oh, we have, we have a song <laughs> car, and then... She was just kind of walked on. He's like, I guess not. We're going to just walk. Well, I guess we're just walking here. Elizabeth leads you to a very unassuming corner store right on the borders of the Temple District and Housing District. It's generically named just a place for grocery and supply. The energy when you walk in is not great. (laughs) As this place is silent, there's no greeting from the store owner who's got his, like, feet propped up on the counter and just kind of, like, flipping through what looks to be like a newspaper. Elizabeth approaches the counter and she kind of goes... And from the counter, a sort of heavyset, bald man with a thick mustache just kind of goes... Deville says. All right. Great conversation we're having here already. And then Elizabeth kind of shoots him a glance. He's like, puts his hands up. He's like, okay. Just following Elizabeth's lead, waiting for her to say something. I, excuse me, I was told to tell you that we are off down River Styx to join the ferryman and his merriment. The older gentleman kind of cocks an eyebrow at this, rolls his eyes, <clears throat> and kind of leans back and just like elbows a tile in the wall, which kind of sinks in a bit. And you see one of the shelves further down one of the aisles just kind of like 
revealing a passageway going further beneath this door. <sighs> Elizabeth sort of takes a deep breath. And Neville looks at you kind of quizzically. I just kind of give him a shrug like, mm. <laughs> Before, um, yeah. Is there anything that I can see or smell or feel coming down from down the the way or is it just a dark path a draft okay <laughs> and a not so pleasant smell nice. kind of wafts into the store and as elizabeth is kind of frozen there standing at the entrance you can see kind of like fidgeting a bit to herself you can see the the store owner just says would you hurry up it stinks down there so does your attitude when i push her forward I'm like, come on, let's go. You hear an, uh, uh, <laughs> make an insight check. <laughs> you hear like a. <clears throat> it's bad. It's a 13. He's mad at you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just a grunt in your general direction. Another roll of the eyes before Elizabeth is kind of pushed forward and then makes her way down these sort of stone steps going further and further. That, that kind of putrid smell getting thicker and thicker in the air and as you get closer and closer to the bottom you eventually reach this kind of walkway you can see that separating that walkway from another is like a stream of sludgy Mm. water and you can kind of make an approximation based on how low you went and the smell and sound is uh, kind of guess you're probably in a sewer of some kind Mm. it's not great so, uh, I want to tell us where we're going here, or, uh, are we just going to need to follow the, uh, sewage? Um, Elizabeth is kind of, as soon as she's down there, plugging her nose with a handkerchief and, ugh, like, shivering to herself, um, as you see, like, as... She's doing this, and as you're talking to her, she's making movements with her with her uh, other hand and um, snaps her fingers as you see her eyes kind of alight um, and through, like, small tears <laughs> that are forming in her eyes. She's, like, scanning the walls for something. She's just completely, like, in this kind of focused state looking for this thing as you're talking, and kind of mumbling to herself as Deville walks over to you while she's doing this and says, I think I have an idea of where we're going. Which, if we are going there, then it's good. I have some mm. experience. Okay, good. It has to do with my my job. Do you remember what my job is? You're giving me a look like you don't. You know, like the whole like criminal underground yeah, thing? criminal underground thing. Okay. It's really, yeah. It's not great. my personal criminal underground, but it is no, a no, criminal No, no, it's great. I, total, I thought we were going to a bakery, so. Oh, well, be pleasant. I think there's bakers That's there. That's a joke. Oh, well. I know we're not going to a bakery. It's fine. Well, we didn't really have breakfast, so it's on the mind. <laughs> well, not right now. Right now, sewage is on the mind. Mm, mm-hmm. As Elizabeth, you hear, like, ah, finally. This way. And she just kind of makes her way. The words kind of bouncing off of her um, in this very determined state. And you follow Elizabeth as this kind of routine presents itself at every junction, every turn, where... Elizabeth takes a moment to scan the surroundings with these arcane glowing eyes uh, before proclaiming that it's this way or that way and then moving down um, the sewer tunnels. All of you just... Ugh. It's good maybe you didn't have breakfast so early. <laughs> <laughs> these winding tunnels all eventually lead to light where the putrid smells of the sewers seem to fade and the sounds of rushing water are accompanied by faint chatter from a crowd. You turn a corner and there is no stream in between these walkways that just turns into a tunnel that goes forward to this kind of bright, 
pale violet light as Elizabeth sighs a deep sigh of relief and looks at you all and says, we're here. And I says, I knew it. Still got it. I haven't been here in so long, but I still got it. Hey, Grandpa. Okay, okay, well... It, I am not of elven grandpa age, I'll have you know. Wow, s- smooth comeback. It's <laughs> meant to be a comeback. It's a teaching moment to let I, you know. I'm not a grandpa. He anyway. says as he as he's just uh, <laughs> makes his way pat down with Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, you are with them as you make your way further, further, closer and closer to this light. <laughs> Eventually... You can see through the tunnel a stone chamber of quite some size filled with people. But they are not engaging in rabble rousing or camaraderie. There's, It's not like this is like uh, some kind of gathering or, or, or you know, party or even a store of some kind. It's strange. These people are all sort of herded into a maze of velvet rope. They're all Ooh, waiting in line. They are queuing. They're queuing, as, uh, as wow. some would say. All leading to a central destination. A tree. A tree whose roots kind of grip into the stonework of the flooring and extends all the way to the top of this stone chamber fairly deep underneath Lunastra. The bark is this pale, almost pinkish wood that rises all the way up to a violet canopy that stretches and extends over the entirety of this chamber. But the light comes from crystals that seem to grow along the branches, illuminating this chamber in this pale glow of light. Elizabeth joins the queue at the end, this long line of people. And they chatter amongst themselves, some louder than others, some silently. Everyone has this buzz of excitement about them, but no one dares speak too loud. At least, no one who seems polite does. How long is the line? Like, if you were to, like... If you were to get in line... (laughs) If we were going to look at the wait time. Yeah, if we were looking at the wait time. The wait time is... Is it posted outside, you know? Wait time posted outside, it's probably not super long. (laughs) I'd probably say, like, 20 minutes. Damn, 20 minutes. Yeah, single writer, you got any? Single writer. Uh, single you're in a group. Elizabeth no. doesn't want to doesn't want to break to the single rider line Damn where it. people are just going through. <laughs> Even though you can see that there's some families. Can I buy a fast pass? <laughs> you see, <laughs> there definitely probably is a fast pass line. You can see some people that are in more like elegant gown and clothing, like getting into a separate line. Um, and at the as you're kind of reaching the actual lines of this queue, where it becomes like the velvet ropes, where it's more formal lines. Um, You can see that standing post there are two individuals. They wear this kind of dark um, garb that is very uniform, like a hooded tunic of some kind. And uh, pants tucked into boots, very bland, very, for lack of a better term, suspicious looking. (laughs) But you can't see their faces. Okay. Because they're shielded by porcelain masks. Interesting, okay. They stand guard, their hands behind their back. Holstered spell books are at their sides, uh, but no other weapon, it seems, as you just are. We're just walking in, we just get Mm -hmm. into the the regular line. Get into the regular line. Okay, I'm gonna gonna lean over to Elizabeth, and I'm gonna be like, don't you have pull in the city? Aren't you kind of important? Can we, like, not wait in this, or... Um, as you kind of lean towards Elizabeth, um, you're kind of like looking over at this situation, examining the room, examining the guards, um, 
and you lean towards Elizabeth, she looks back at you. She looks completely different. Like her, like, it looks like now where Elizabeth was standing, there is now just a human woman okay. with the same sort of hair, but no indication of being a tiefling or anything along those lines. Mm. Um, she looks and says, not down here, I don't. Mm. Is it like bad that you're down here or? It's a little bad. It's mm. It certainly wouldn't do much for my reputation, but at the same time, uh, not many people, I guess, know what the Lunar Songstress looks like unless they're really paying attention, I guess. Hmm. Do you know anything about them? And I point to the people in the porcelain masks. You now, like, put, looking around, you can see that, like, posted on the cor- like on the corners, the edges of this room, and, like, one every couple of feet... Um, so that's just her surrounding this circular chamber. There's one of these porcelain mass figures, and there's two at the entrance of what looks to be like a, a, a doorway in the tree. She looks and says, I, I have an idea of who they are. They are, um, and the veil cuts in. They have a merriment. The, um, rulers of the underground here in Lunastra. Mm. Always uh, an underground, huh? Oh, yes. Whenever you can find a civilization and society, you will find an underbelly mm, in and... which um, <laughs> someone wants to take control of. Mm. Are they sort of an organized sort of thing, or they have a ruler, a hierarchy, or are they just kind of... From what I remember, yes... They have a hierarchy, although it's more like there's one person they report to. Is that who we're trying to talk to, Elizabeth? <sighs> Deville kind of looks and says, I'd be surprised if you had that much cloud. And Elizabeth said, no, we're not meeting the leader of them. We're meeting somebody who's more connected to the underground. I, 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 I don't have talks with the merriment. I feel like you probably should have given us more information before we came down here so that we could have helped you better because I don't really know what you want me to do here. You're just... back up. I know you're powerful, you're, you're fighters, you're adventurers. I just need someone to back me up and to let people know if something happens to me where I am. So we wait. Do you want to play heads up <laughs> or something? Heads up. <laughs> How do you? I'm not familiar with that game. <laughs> Fantasy heads you take up. Take a tablet and then you <laughs> stone tablet. And you get a stone tablet and then you, <laughs> you take a, a bunch of piece of journal and you write something on it. So I, I have to write the thing. No, then... no, no, no. <laughs> Deville. It would be too much to explain to you, it's fine. <laughs> you make your way through the line. Each person ushered through. Each person vaguely searched. It doesn't look like they're taking anything off of anybody, really. It looks like they're basically... Um, as you get to the front, it looks like they go through. Um, not really any bags of holding, but... They um, go through a metal detector. They go through like a magic detector. <laughs> okay. There's someone there who's had, got his hands that like emanate some sort of glowing light cool. that they just kind of like <laughs> detect magic. As <laughs> detect magic. <laughs> um, and you can see people do carry like blades and stuff and that sort of thing. Um, I light up. Actually, like a did, little, what did I say about? The, I light up like a Christmas tree. What? That's actually a good question. Let me. Let me. I got quite a few things on me. Um. No, no, we're good. So, eventually, you make your way to the front of that line, and the same process goes. One of those porcelain masks for you says, arms up. Um, they kind of look at you and say, are you carrying anything that you intend to use for harming another individual within the Witchwood Market? No. Um, you see 
uh, their eyes kind of alight for a second. Okay. And then kind of ushers you forward. Deville is there, asks the same questions, goes through the same procedure. Um, eyes alight. Ushered through. Mm-hmm. But it's not like the Church of the Morning Lord. Not like the Church of the Morning Lord. There, it, it, It's a similar kind of magic, but you're not an entire... It's not like it, holy fire. <laughs> it's not holy fire. It's just like a slight change okay. that just kind of... You can see their eyes alight, and you can tell that there is some kind of arcane okay. vision that they're using. Mm. It looks a little bit different from just like tech magic or the holy fire that the mm. Knights of the Morning Lord have. Okay. You're not entirely sure what it does, but... Mm. It's interesting because they they did that in response to your answer to them. So mm-hmm. you're wondering, you kind of left wondering as to what what does that mean? A little, a little um, curious. As soon as all three of you are through, um, Elizabeth is kind of sweating a bit as soon as she sees the eyes alight, but they don't say anything. Um, as you are shown the base of the tree in its full glory in this entrance there's just this wavy almost like like still water barrier that is like a doorway that you're told to walk through it's just light on the other end just (laughs) it's water it looks like water. Okay. Vincent, his thought is like, not, not fucking again. I don't want to get wet again. <laughs> <laughs> I just had this shirt dry clean. You're closing your eyes <laughs> as you're going through. And, and there is this strange feeling, this permeable barrier of feels like arcane mm. that just kind of pulls you in as soon as you touch it. Um, you are pulled through. You feel the rush that's before you land on grass Hello there, it's Christian, the Dungeon Master for the Strings of Fate. I hope that you all have enjoyed your holidays and you are ready for a continuation of our story. Thank you for listening to episode 41, the first episode of two this week. Originally, I planned to contain two episodes in one, and then I went over because I was having a lot of fun, and so was the players, so we decided to just split them up into two episodes. And I think they turned out pretty good. First things first, this episode is sponsored by Dungeon Depths, quality gaming supplies with character. Dungeon Depths is an online store where you can get dice, dice vaults, apparel, stickers, soft pod merchandise. It's all there, and it's all wonderful. But this is actually a dual advertisement. We are not only advertising Dungeon Depths, we are also advertising the soft pod Patreon. And you will learn why in just a few moments. We have a Patreon in which people can support the show directly, and we are working on trying to expand the bonus content that we bring to you all. Currently, the Renair Soft Talk is there early, so you can go check that out right now if you sign up for our Patreon. Patreon is just another way that you can show support for the show, and it really helps us up because it helps keep the show running and all the expenses that go along with the show. But the reason that I mash up Dungeon Depths and the SoftPod Patreon is because if you are a subscriber to the SoftPod Patreon, you will get first access to the next Dungeon Depths Dice Restock going live Saturday the 22nd at 2 p.m. EST. You will be able to shop that sale 30 minutes before public access, including custom dice commission slots. So that 30 minutes is quite an advantage. That means that on January 22nd, that Saturday, 
you get to hop into the store at 1.30 p.m. EST, a whole 30 minutes before anyone else, to buy whatever amazing dice Olivia has posted upon their social media. Or you can secure a commission slot for your own set of amazing dice. Everything Olivia makes is amazing. Their dice are highly sought after. So that 30 minutes is a very, very cool thing. Thank you so much, Olivia, for offering that to the SoftPod patrons. Don't forget, though, that you can use the code SOFTPOD, S-O-F-P-O-D, to get 10% off of your order at checkout. Thank you, Dungeon Depths, and since this is also a Patreon shoutout, I will now take a moment to read out some of our honorary bard patrons. Thank you to... Melanie, Anna, Starry Spells, Elliot, Katie, Roanoke, Faye, Isela, and Carissa. And double thank you to Carissa, who is our new social media coordinator, and I said social. Yes, that is right. We recently put out a call into the soft cord for a social media coordinator to help us increase our social media presence and also to come up with cool ideas that we can use to engage the soft cord more and to be more active on our social medias. And Carissa stepped up and we are very, very excited to work with her going forward. Already, she has been an amazing addition to the team uh, with a lot of amazing spirit. And so we are so excited to work with her. So thank you, Dungeon Depths, Patrons, and Carissa. Moving onward, this show is sponsored by Roll20. Roll20 is a virtual tabletop that you can use to manage your games, battle maps, tokens, characters, any sort of thing that you would need to manage online games. This show is a part of the Roll20 Spotlight, and we just want to take a moment to thank Roll20. So thank you, Roll20. You can find them at Roll20.net. Thank you, as always, to the Soft Court for being an amazing community who we are very excited to watch these episodes along with, as well as the mods of the Soft Court for keeping everything together. Thank you to Mary and Celia for running an amazing RP event in the Soft Court. It was fantastic. Really great job on that. And lastly, because I'm running out of time, I wanted to do a comment prompt. I feel like we don't talk in the comments anymore, and I'd love to kind of pick your brains a little let's see let's see i want to know about your oc's favorite animal there's something in my mind that i can't spoil yet but i just would like to hear about oc fantasy animals so go ahead and let me know in the comments below anyways i believe that is all from me thank you so much and back to the show bye You land in soft grass, and that silent chamber with just whispers, with the occasional laugh or, you know, a conversation that gets a little bit too loud, that sound is suddenly traded for raucous crowds, cheers, music, the sounds of revelry and camaraderie. As ahead of you, you can see what looks to be festival. Almost like a carnival of some kind. Tents and tents that stretch as far as the eyes can see in front of you. It is an eruption of joyous noise and light. A fairground of twilight colors and shimmering pastel light. Tents are set up as far as the eye can see, each one filled with strange and shifting wares from shimmering gems that shine in these fairy tale-esque patterns to odd creatures that rattle inside cages. You can hear the cheering crowds off in the far distance from what looks to be almost like a coliseum that stands out of a, a forest of these twilight colors. You hear the sounds of spells that thunder and crash far off, and you can see that many of the people here are either filled with awe, with some kind of magic or substance coursing through their veins, 
or business as usual as they just make their way through the tree. You, you get shouldered by the next person who comes out, like, out of the way, and they just kind of make their way through down. And you see as you are kind of shouldered by a person, they are like this elven person. As soon as they pass you, you see their form shift and grow to like five feet taller than they previous were, previously were from their elven form into like that of like a minotaur's form that just kind of as they make their way into the Witchwood Market. And DeVille looks and says, Wow, this place has really grown last, since the last time I've been here. And Elizabeth is wide-eyed. The first emotion you've seen that isn't serious determination or, or anger, just awe of this place. Vincent's eyes are just lit up. He's like, Am I seeing what I, I think I'm seeing? You certainly are. Uh, it's a interesting sight if it's your first time seeing something like it. It's familiar. It certainly is. Uh, it certainly is in a strange way. There's taking a look away from like what looks to be like the man-made quote-unquote structures. You can see that the grass underfoot is like this blue green but with each step it just kind of like ripples in a pond it just shifts colors between like blue purple pink green just and the trees themselves are in these like twisting whimsical shapes with the these full thick canopies but off in the distance there is just this barrier of fog that prevents you from seeing far off any kind of real like um, that's what I'm looking for. Any kind of scenery far past this kind of weird forest clearing that you're in, full of these tents and this fair ground. Is there a sky? There is a sky that peeks through up the very, very top. And it's this very light purple shade. No sun, no moon from what you can see, just purple. No fucking way. Am I am I picking up the right thing? Can I roll a check to see if I know what this is? Make an check, sure. You've done a lot of. You can, I'll give you advantage on I, this one. Yeah, I'll give you advantage on this one because you've done a lot of research on this in particular. Seventeen plus nine. Twenty six. A lot of scholars have written a lot of books about a very recent sort of arcane breakthrough about what the world and the universe looks like beyond our own. And the one that the scholars of the Magus Academy have made a full connection to that only they can access but are able to bring back reports and creatures and plants and things that are far beyond any that we have seen on this plane. The one that has full detail that you have poured your heart into reading about is the Feywild. Oh my god. And this place seems to fit the description. Holy shit. Oh my god. As you feel a buzz of excitement that rises up a little bit stronger than you may (laughs) have been anticipating as Deville um, Elizabeth is kind of also shocked. Dill kind of takes the lead and pats you both on the back and says, So, what are we doing in the Witchwood Market? And Elizabeth kind of shakes. Oh, uh, you're right. Um, we're meeting with a, a, an individual at a, in, a, in a, a private business meeting. I, um, and DeVille sort of turns and looks... You're going to tell us the details of the meeting now, because now you are officially both out of your depth. Sorry, what? What were you saying? <laughs> it's been looking around, <laughs> uh, like completely distracted, just taking everything in. It all kind of sighs and smiles, and this looks and, and says, "A normal reaction." Um, with both of you don't be fooled by all of this. It's a wonderful place. It's also an extremely dangerous place. I will 
remind you that nobody had their weapons taken from them, mm. and I'm very sure that whatever god that was definitely saw that you were in disguise. And so, just to get you in on what kind of place this is, and Elizabeth, I'm sure you already know, this is a haven for people looking for a good time that's extra legal. Outside of the bounds of legality. <laughs> outside the, of the bounds of the universe that we are <laughs> we are from do you know do you under, do you understand what this is like like fully what what's going on here um i have an idea i don't i don't know the science behind it but i don't know how they did it i, I it's been a a a feat certainly this is not how i remember it looking entirely it seems a lot more whimsical than the last time I was here. A lot more fun. It smells great, <laughs> he says as he begins to kind of make oh, his Oh, don't eat any of the food. <laughs> it's, it's it's fine. Mm -hmm. it, it's fine here, I'm, I'm sure it is. It, sure. I, I've eaten here before, it's oh. good. <laughs> Have you uh, given out your middle name too? <laughs> what? <laughs> as DeVille's kind of making his way forward, Elizabeth is kind of taking steps forward uh, before he kind of puts his hand on her shoulders. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just, uh, just stories, that's all. Just stories. Listen. What is this? We cannot go into this meeting without knowing what it's about. And without preparing properly for it. Because if you go into a negotiation with someone here in the Witchwood Market and you're not ready for it, you may end up in a bad spot. And Elizabeth kind of says, I, I was just going to talk to them. I was going to be up front and, and figure out, do investigating work and, and see... What information I could glean? Just information. Are we are we hoping to get anything specific? Wink, wink. Out of this. I want to today? know. I want to know who supplies them with the moon shards. Who who do I go to? Who do I find to get this dust? And I was able to secure a meeting with a interested buyer. And DeVille says, interested buyer? Okay, why would a buyer go to a random third party? It's like, because I said that I could possibly supply them for cheaper. Mm -hmm. So that's the lie we're telling. That is the lie we're telling. I, do have, I have no intention of giving these people what they were looking for. And so far, that's what I've got. Um, I... So we're just gonna, like, lie and, and connive through this meeting? That's, like, the, the ploy here? What if they can tell? I, um... Not saying that you're not a convincing liar, just, you know, people do have magic for that. I, I I know the knowledge. I, I, I can I can speak my way through to talking about uh, the the shards of the fractured mother uh, better than anyone. Mm. He says, oh, no, that, that might not cut it because you also need to know what it's like selling something so right. illegal, as you said. So, what's the plan? Elizabeth just kind of freezes up. Mm. It's not able to really. Are we trying to convince them that we could very much, in fact, supply them with moon shards, or? Uh, 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 I. Uh, kind of takes a breath and says, "How long until this meeting?" And she says, "I, I an hour or so." And we got time. We have time. You can think of something. Why don't I take you around, and I try and will show you around the Witchwood Market here. Some things have changed since I was last here, but it'll give you a chance to get acclimated to the things you might see. Both of you, why don't come with me, please? Don't mind if I do. 
<laughs> okay. So you will have more time to explore the Witchwood Market once we kind of figure out this meeting. But you do have a, an hour to explore the Witchwood Market oh now, God. which gives you a chance. I will give you a description of a couple places within the market. There are some places beyond the market that you can see that you probably won't be able to make it to and back in time. One of them being this massive... Um, on the outskirts of the forest, you can see an enormous structure that stands tall, like over the woods, made of pale violet, almost like marble-looking material. And it's a, a coliseum where there are cheers erupting, and you can hear garbled sound, uh, like almost like an announcer can be heard from there. Um, Deville doesn't look at that area that much. <laughs> he kind of keeps his eyes away from there. Interesting. Um, Noted. And there's also like a, a, a Ferris wheel on the outskirts that seems to just slowly turn. Oh, no, Vincent's there's like, never well. in a million years. <laughs> uh, that is also quite high up Yeah, there. no, he's good. <laughs> but in terms of what you can look at, there are market stalls here. These market stalls sell a number of things. Um, I will give you a brief description of a few, and I'll say that we can probably take out two now and then the other two at a different point. Uh, I will describe some. There is a garishly purple tent that is covered in, like, eye designs. Mm. There is a tent seemingly made of scroll parchment where ruins seem to just light on the side and shift uh, along the sides of the tent itself. Um... There is a greenish brown tent that is beset by moss and fauna that seems to just grow up the side and then wither and then grow again. And then lastly, there is a brown and and tent that looks the uh, brown tent that it seems to be like furry, like made of different furs. It just, <laughs> um, so completely up to you oh on which goodness. two you'd like to check out. And uh, you can also, uh, you know, continue. Um, does Elizabeth look like a human still in this area? Elizabeth still looks like a human okay. in this area. So disguises still hold up. <laughs> disguises still hold up. Some okay. people just drop their disguises yeah. as soon as they get That's in there, pretty much. Good to know. Um, and she will use spell slots to continue that. Um, DM question. Would yes. You, would you say that I would have been able to find... A really expensive pearl and an owl feather in my time around traveling? Absolutely. You okay. Would. Good to know. I'm gonna go. There's someone with the eyeballs. The eyeballs? Okay. You make your over your sorry. You make your way over to this kind of garish a smattering of garish purple, this tent with these eye designs. That, as you get closer, you realize are not just eyes. It brings back a uncomfortable feeling. Mm. As it's eye, an eye design with a circular outline and a few wavy appendages attached. Oh. As you see the sign. Xanathar's Extraordinary oh. Extra Legal Emporium. My god. <laughs> Uh, the big man is not there himself, but as you approach, you can see a number of strange knickknacks that pack these shelves to the brim that shine and shake and emit just absolutely strange, bordering on rancid magic auras. <clears throat> Sitting behind the sort of uh, counter there, you can see a gnome with this grayish purple skin, uh, bald head and like this kind of hair that's grown along here um, who is wearing these kind of sort of purple robes and a bugbear that is like flanking him sitting in the back just like arms crossed keeping an eye as um, <laughs> the gnome sort of speaks up and says, ah, welcome to the Emporium. Mm. My name is Zabla. And sort of looks at you and says I know you. No you don't. I well, I guess I don't. <laughs> You're right. That was rude of me. Gaslighting. <laughs> Anyways, Zoblob, very nice mm. to meet you. You... Are you sure I don't know you? Never met you in my life. You weren't in Zinnia? I don't know where that is. I used to have a shop there. What? <sighs> I'm embarrassing myself. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Well, don't let this affect your customer evaluation. Do know Zoblob, but... You do know Zoblob. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's from like the second session, I think. There's well, no well, there's no I, way that you would remember him. I, I vaguely remember the name. He had a shop in the Dock Ward that oh. he saw Renair and Floon get beat up that, outside oh their shop. Oh my god. And he, he, his shop was a front for Xanathar as well. And this oh, is also a Xanathar thing. Um, and just, well... As you <laughs> may have realized, we deal in the extra legal here at the Emporium. A number of trinkets and knickknacks that may interest you. Mm. They all do things. I'm not entirely sure what, but I guess you'll find out when you buy them. Extra meaning like super or like extras and like extra. Extra is like radio. outside. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a little confusing because I said the extra. prefix is. Yeah, the prefix. Different. It, it had to go with the extraordinary and the, you know, extra mm, You don't need to do that. It's, it's, it's a naming convention, though. It's I get not it. my call. <laughs> it's really not my call. The brand is not your call. I don't get, I don't get say in the branding of it. I just got relocated <laughs> out here. Mm-hmm. But it's extra as in outside. I have to explain that at least once a day. Mm. But it's, you know, alongside our trinkets, we also offer a number of other services that you can hire us for, including, but not limited to, Two, retrieving items that rightfully belong to you, bringing items into places that may or may not be legal or easy to get things into, um, as well as uh, intimidation. If you need it, my buddy's pretty good at it. No, we got this big guy, and I elbow Deville. <laughs> Deville has got a trinket. He's got, huh? Oh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> He's, He's really good at down. intimidating. He's really scary. Arr. Yeah. Was, uh, anyway. Uh, no, oh. we're just looking. We're just looking around. Um, Bugbear's like, I'm not that intimidated. <laughs> it's like, your problem, then. Oh my god, it's a you problem. <laughs> All right, take a look around. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna have a little peek. Take a look around. Sure. Anything um, that sticks out as something I might find interesting. Give me a D100 roll. Oh god. I want to kind of know what strength these magical items are. Um, 73. 73. Okay. I can't believe that we're on the Feywild. Or a version of it. That's crazy. It's difficult for it to... It's... The last I heard, it's... It's... I, I don't know how they'd be able to achieve something like that. I, I feel like maybe it's a recreation of the Feywild? Probably. I don't know if it's the actual Feywild. I feel like there's some laws and some yes, dangerous things there. I've also, never been, but... They got it so right. Whoever did it, even if it's a recreation, they must have been there. Hmm. You're right. That is strange. <laughs> Vincent says as if he's been to the Feywild. Deville's like, yeah, it totally looks like it. Vincent's possibly seen it before. You see. Out of everything catches your eye. Give me an arc. Oh, man. Yeah. 20. 20? Yeah. You see. Everything emits like a strange magical aura. You can see like a small statue of a lion that you kind of pet its head and it just kind of like a lighter, just like a puff of fire. Mm. Things that do small magical effects here and there. A couple daggers that kind of sheen with the same kind of glow that Lidara's sheen with. And kind of in like a refuge pile. There is what looks to be like a, a, a small container that is locked. Mm-hmm. Like there's like a, there's some kind of lock on it. And as you're kind of looking at it, Zoblob kind of speaks out and says, Oh, uh, everything in that container is half off because I can't really get any of it to work. Especially that one. I don't even really know what's in there. You haven't tried figuring it out? We've tried everything from a knock spell to, you know, bringing it to some disenchanters to try and dispel the magic. I mean, that lock is on there tight. Hmm. And we're, we're good lock picks. We really are. But that, that that's something else. I'll pick it up and I'll cast identify on it. Cast identify? Yeah. There is... The Identify spell is interesting in this world because it is all linked to what people know. So when someone identifies something and it's something that no one's ever identified before, it becomes 
up to them to decipher the images that are conjured in their head. And then once that is given like an official designation, then everyone who identifies that item from now on will get that official designation. Mm-hmm. You feel the images that are presented in your head flash wildly and quickly and nearly send you tumbling to the ground. As for a second, you think you saw creation. Like the creation of the universe. What the fuck? (laughs) And you're not entirely sure what that was or why that was. It's probably not the container or the lock. Yeah. But whatever's in here is extremely powerful. And it's half off. Uh, yeah, no, this is kind of nothing. Um, how, how much are you selling it for? Oh, try and, you, why don't you present a, I, I present a price first. They love haggling. No, I was gonna do that after. Yeah. Uh, I can part for that with, for like, half off, two gold? That's way too much. This is just a jar. It's, it's, it's more like a pouch. It, it, it's... It might is have it, something it, useful it, in there. Like, yeah, it's like it's like, like, a, like a leather pouch. I was sort of thing. imagining like a container than like a. Oh like yeah, a, yeah but like, it's more like a leather pouch that you. It's just of, a pouch. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's a nice made pouch though, and nice made pouches usually go. Mm. Don't you just want to get it off your hands though? You persuasion check. Hold another eleven, but persuasion. What well, persuasion plus thirteen? I always forget. Uh, yeah, just to get it out of the sight, I guess. No one's been able, no one's been down to buy it yet, so it's it, honestly. I took a quick look at it. I know things about things, especially magic things. It's probably only worth like not even a gold. What? Um, okay, I'll give you the super discount then. Let's cut it down to nine silver. Sure. Ah, okay. All right. Nine silver it is. Hand it over. <laughs> I'll hand over nine silver. <laughs> you can put in a uh, uh, strange pouch into your inventory uh, with a lock. Um, the, one of the cool things about my the spell that I just used, identify, is from my fate touched thing, the feet. Oh, yeah. So it's a charisma-based spell. Um, obviously, I'm charisma, but it's fate-touched fate-touched. feet. Very interesting. Very and cool. I can use it once a day. Once a day. That's your free identify. Yep. And uh, you you don't get much as to what's inside this pouch, but whatever's in there is mm, it's kind of wild. Kind of wicked and wild. Wow. Does it Does it emit any... Um, effects like does it does it move? Are there any noises coming from it? Is there yeah. a smell? You yeah, shake I'll it. shake it a little bit. Make a make an intelligence check straight up. <laughs> Five. Five. Mm, there's something shuffling in there. There's some. There's certainly something in there. Mm. Not entirely sure what, but like there's a something marble. in this. Yeah, yeah, a single marble. <laughs> uh, there's something. There's something in oh there. Oh my god, it's, it's just like Azrum. <laughs> <laughs> One little marble <laughs> bouncing around. Sorry, Mikaela. Sorry, <laughs> Mikaela's gonna be like, "That was really funny." That was, that was really so funny. funny. I hope it makes it into the episode. <laughs> so, I start crying. <laughs> In real life, <laughs> uh, tense. Um, yeah, it looks like for here there are some random trinkets that you can buy, but um, yeah. In terms of. Um, what they have to offer, that's what this tent has to offer, is they are uh, for hire, mostly. Their services mm-hmm. are more so. The trinkets are mostly just a front for other services that they do in which you can hire them for later um, on down the line. I'll leave the tent um, okay. with DeVille. Is uh, Elizabeth tagging along with us? 
Elizabeth is tagging along, okay. and you can see that Deville, like while you were looking around and talking, Deville is kind of like talking to her one on one, and you kind of get a glimpse of their conversation for a second. It's like, okay, so another thing to remember is just straight face, just stay straight <laughs> ahead, no matter what they do. No, since we're not actually listen. Look, rule number one. What was rule number one? We're not actually selling anything. Exactly. We're not. We have nothing to sell. So you can't say that a price is good. No price will ever be good. And, and they're kind of just like giving like a pep talk. Yeah. As Elizabeth's just kind of nodding and taking notes. Okay. As he says. Good. You're getting it. <laughs> Vincent, how is your shopping going? Uh, t- <laughs> great, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I got something that was uh, on Super Mega Sale. Ah, all right. Did you know Haggling that? worked out. Did you know that Xanathar had a booth here? Did you? Do you have one down here? You guys kind of did similar things, right? No, I didn't fill out the tabling sheet in time. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. God damn it. Um, no, uh, Deville says I had assumed that Xanathar may branch out at some point. I didn't realize how recent it would be. Oh, but, so this uh, wasn't here before? No, when not... not I, I, when I was... came here, I was, you know, much younger, mm. and it looked very different than it does now. It was still kind of the Sylph Forest clearing look. It wasn't so pretty before. And not as large. Definitely not. Mm. The, the crowds here are packed. This basically looks like a Ren Fair. <laughs> yeah. It's like a huge packed Ren Fair with people. That's so cool. And I you can it. see, oh, yeah. like, there are people from all over. Like, on Syria and Boreali. Um, but there are people that are just, like, not as normal. You can see that there is, like, walking through one of the aisles, people make way as, like, a, a ten-foot cyclops just kind of Ooh, leans cool. down to tents and just, like, I'm looking to buy some flowers. And it's it's just kind of poking like a huge hand into people's tents and stuff. Like, like people that are from all walks and of different kinds. And you're not entirely sure where everyone's coming from. It's just like flowers is a good idea. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I thought they'd be nice, thoughtful. Hmm. Um, And I was like, what kind of flowers does this person need that he needs to? Anyways. um, Okay. So, uh, I still don't know if I should call you Elizabeth or Songstress or... uh, Songstress, Elizabeth is fine. Um, Both at the same time? That's a long name. No, no, just just Elizabeth is fine. Elizabeth. Elizabeth is fine. All right, Elizabeth. Um, uh, Not like Miss Elizabeth or something. Just just Elizabeth. It's weird. It is weird. It feels weird. It does. It's strange. Just just Elizabeth will work for right now. All right. Um, Well, Elizabeth, they... uh, Well, I don't know how much you would want to trust the Xanathar Guild, but they do retrieve items. Huh. I don't know if that's something, an avenue you want to pursue in trying to find these things. I can look into it. I brought a good amount of gold with me. And, and, oh, there was just... <laughs> kind of leans in like, what are you saying? Don't say that out loud. People bring gold, yes, but they usually don't announce it. How much gold did you bring with you? It's like, we have a, a store that, that we can pull from for personal use. I decide to bring all of it just in case. What a terrible idea. Usually Hide people, that. <laughs> oh my goodness. He says as he kind of, give me this. And he says he Put your hand it. on it. Keep, yeah. keep your hand on that. Keep your hand on this. Gosh. There are no guards here. They don't care if people steal from you. All right. Yeah, they, they, they just care if you mess with their business. And he says as he points out more of those porcelain masked figures on the corners. Uh, are they looking? He, are they looking at us? They're not looking they're at you kind of, particularly. Yeah, they're okay. literally just scanning the scanning crowds. Around. Okay. And they are motionless. They, they just kind of like scan their head, just kind of anything. swivel. Okay. Looking back and forth, as um. Uh, you are free to go to one more tent before uh, the story progresses. I'm torn. So, what are my options again? We've got a green a tent, tent that looks like it's made of like a magical parchment, like a scroll, like spell scrolls. Oh. Uh, I'll I'll tell you straight up what these last three tents are: oh. spell scrolls, components, and substances, quote unquote, <laughs> um, and uh, familiars, familiars, and and magical creatures in particular. Hmm. 
I gotta go with the scrolls. I gotta, gotta go with the scrolls. It just, oh, Vincent's a little kid in a candy shop right now. You approach this tent of this kind of yellowish design of this this parchment type, and you can see that across it, almost like a uh, like like one of those walls that are just like LED screens that play a video, like a uh, that you can see just like like runes alighting along the side that are translated into common um, to say Monty's maniacal magics. This tense walls are packed with tomes upon tomes of spell books, spell scrolls, things that uh, there's another shelf there that are, you know, titled forbidden magics that are like locked behind like a, a, a gate, like a one that you must call the target employee to unlock for you. <laughs> They're the Copic markers. <laughs> the Copic markers. Um, everything here um, is is very like emits like this this wave of arcane energy that you can palpably feel. Um, and the man behind the counter there is reminiscent of a handsome snake. He is a thin human man, uh, maybe some elvish heritage, pale with long flowing robes of emerald colors and black hair that's kind of like wavy that turns into the like deep green at the tips with like heavy bags under his eyes, his mouth always in this like bemused smirk. And he says, ah, welcome. I am Monty and these are my wares. Uh, please let us discuss. Uh, Would you say he's Monty Python? No, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> that's not what I meant. It's, it's a username. Name. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Cut that out of your No, keep it in. That's. I didn't even put that together until you just said that. You said snake. So. Oh my god. You also said snake and then pale and then long dark hair and I thought it before tomorrow. That was a <laughs> Oh my god. What I love this I character already. Uh, Monty kind of crosses his hands. He's got a very, like, into himself posture. He's kind of uh, running his hands over his knuckles. He says, Yes, there's something I can interest you in. We have a number of spell scrolls that may uh, interest you. Uh, I'm quite the transcriber, so I can also work to transcribe a custom spell for you if needed. Vin- uh, you've never seen Vincent more excited. <laughs> he's vibrating. <laughs> yeah, he's Mon- just gonna. He's gonna start um, while Monty's talking to him. He's gonna start looking through the wares that are in front of him and just trying to like see what kind of spells are here. Monty, I'll, I'll explain Monty's wares to you now. And you can look around and you can see that he's got like a little catalog set out that you can look through, and the list of spells goes on and on and on up to a certain level. I'd say the highest and the most expensive is a seventh level to an extent. It depends on what seventh level you ask for. But instead of being like, ah, here's a randomly picked list of spells that may or may not be useful to you, the way that Monty works the service is that for a highly expensive price, whether that be gold or services or something along those lines, Monty can get you a spell scroll of any spell up to seventh level. That is one time use. Yeah, also, oh my god, the power. There's so many. And and for even more powerful, for the most powerful spells, for big stuff, like stuff that's experimental, Monty will need you to to make a deal with him at some uh, to, to basically allow him to give you this spell. And that way I'm not selling you teleportation at, <laughs> at, 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 at you know, such a level. But Monty will will do his best to transcribe a spell for you at a high, high price. He also sells what he calls wild magic in a bottle that oh, all yeah. hang and are kind of connected. These vials of this very light blue kind of shimmering um, liquid that it just kind of is there. It says, break one of these and uh, experience magic in its most raw and powerful form. That sounds really dangerous. Do you have a permit for that? No, absolutely not. <laughs> and that's why I sell here. Right, right. <laughs> as, 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 yep, that, that Make tracks. that tracks, yeah. <laughs> yes, if anything catches your eye, please let me know. There are so many spells in the world, Christian. There are so many. I can't even start. This is to introduce you to, to some of these places and to kind of get you thinking. You don't need to have your answer immediately, but it's something you can start thinking about is what spell would be 
very useful to you to have. And of course, there are books on the side that look to be for tomes forbidden by the Mages Academy. I'm gonna look at those. They're interesting. Most of them have to do with extra planar details, um, but Monty kind of cuts in. Says, yes, these tomes are ones that are disallowed by the mages to study because they are dangerous or mm-hmm. perhaps a bit too experimental but in all honesty it's because they want to keep the power for themselves and so I bring sure. the power to the people for a reasonable price mm-hmm. where did you get these? I never read out my sources <laughs> but old friends of mine mm. how much you selling them for? It depends. How illegal are we looking to get these tomes? Are we looking for just a few rituals to call upon some darker, more forbidden magic? Or are we looking for something that is based in, for instance, the readings of a long-dead god? Something um, I'm thinking purely scientific research. Purely scientific I'm not looking to uh, call upon any dead gods. Ah, I see. Uh, let me see. Scientific research. Any particular to, field? I'm not trying to run anyone's life. Um, well, different planes of existence. Maybe talking or traveling to them? Different planes of existence. Ah, yes. How about this one? And he kind of reaches through, and you see that there's this tendril of, like, pale light that just reaches out and just wraps around his fingers as he pulls out a thin notebook. Mm. He says, yes, this notebook was the only thing recovered from a failed expedition into the Feywild. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, shit. It holds the information you need at its crucial moment. If you would ever go into such a place, that is. Right now, we are not even close to the oh, the real thing. Is this bitch uh, snake oil in me? Is, is this guy lying? Make an insight check. Natural one. She's very, Plus nine. <laughs> she's very, very excited about it as he's kind of holding it. He's going over this and just kind of like uh, holding the pages, which flutter open and you can see like these little sparkles and mm-hmm. like energy as he almost seems at the book itself seems to almost like levitate off of his hands he says at the mere price of a hundred gold this artifact could spell the difference between survival or your doom in the land ruled by the summer court steep price for about 20 pages well it's it's good notes. I've mm-hmm. read it myself. It's quite a good read. It's a bit strange on the mind, so I wouldn't suggest reading it all in one sitting. Just as much as you can handle. Mm-hmm. Well, I've read a, quite a bit about uh, these things, so maybe uh, it Should wouldn't be worth a hundred gold. Why don't you take a look first, and then let me know what you think. Sure. I'll open it up. Monty kind of drifts the book over to you, and it kind of lightly lands in your hand, just kind of daintily. As soon as it touches your hands, there is a faint shimmer of energy and like a chill that goes up your spine. As you open the book, it's a small field journal. There's no name written in the front, just initials, RS. As you... See the first page, and immediately your head starts to hurt Holy shit. as you are looking at this strange, strange feeling comes over you as you are. You can't read the words, and you find yourself just flipping through each page. <laughs> just barely able to contain any of the information as you see these detailed drawings of places in the Feywild. You see a pact looks to be 
some kind of court, some kind of kingdom. An abundance of crystalline flowers that just fill the pages until eventually you see on a page a picture it's strange it's not detailed like the others it's it's abstracted a violet being for the book you find your hands just kind of shaking as the book is shut you're in this cold sweat standing in the middle of the witchwood market as Monty kind of his face kind of drops as like oh uh, I'm so sorry are, are you all right I told you that it may be only able to handle a page I didn't expect you to flip through it like that you said a hundred for this? A uh, hundred. I don't have a hundred on me. I only have fifty on me. Deville looks at you and then kind of just like takes the book. Through. I don't let him take it out of my hands. <laughs> I'm like, I need to buy this. Do you have fifty on you? Fifty gold? I I'll do. You. I'll pay you back. Deville looks into your eyes. Um, and I'm going to do an insight check for him, and I'm going to tell you what he sees. Okay. It's not very good. <laughs> and he's not entirely sure what he's looking at. Oh my god. Because in this moment, he has never seen you look this desperate. Maybe not something that you're realizing that you're putting off mm-hmm. as he reaches for his coins. Yeah, the other 50. As Monty <clears throat> is, uh, uh, um, gets back into character and says, Yes, 100 gold. Enjoy your book. Don't, don't, don't read it all in one sitting. Not tell me what to do. As <laughs> Elizabeth sort of looks down and um, says, The time! Quick! And she sort of grabs you and says, We're late. Sorry. Uh, he kind of shakes himself out of it. Because that... Uh, is that familiar, purple figure? It is to you. 